Hello, Rise of Visionaries. I'm Susan May, and I'm here today with two very special guests who are here to share their story to help you and inspire you on your journey of unplugging. Um, so these are my friends, Lisa and Adam. Um, Lisa and I go back about four years now, and we originally met as homeschool moms. And more specifically, we both unschool our children. So that was a very strong point of connection for us right from the beginning. Um, Lisa and Adam are really good friends. They helped us move into this house, which Adam pointed out, this is not where I live anymore. This is fake background. But they were the friends that showed up for us and helped us move our washer and dryer into the house. And um, they've just been incredible friends to us. Um, and when I told Lisa this crazy idea of mine, not barely six months ago, it might have been less than six months, actually, because that's when it first started for me. Um, she immediately said, I want to be your first member, which, of course, just gave me so much energy, like, okay, someone wants to be in it. So, and then she got Adam to join too. So these are my two original founding members of the Rise Up community, and their continual support um, is just like I said, it just energizes me. Um, they bring so much um, to our community with their perspective and sharing their experiences and always encouraging me to keep going. Um, so I'm very grateful to these two. And I just wanna pick their brains a little bit and have them share today um, some of their experience from, let's just call it the madness of the last 20 plus months, um, which for many people has, I think, gotten a little more intense actually in 2021. Um, and so let's start with 2021. And um, I'd love to hear your story from the last, well, I don't even know how many months ago. So um, Adam, how many months ago for your first job, the job that you had had um, for, I don't even know how many years when you were faced with a decision? Excuse me. So I had that job um for six years almost seven years um i work in construction and I, and I do cost estimating um and i would say it started in may when did they send us home oh well, you were home for a year and a half working from home right with when did they send us <laughs> home like may oh, 20, march. oh no march after march yeah march, march of 20 2020. Okay, there you go. And so yeah. fast forward 14 months, they said, hey, uh, it's time to come back in the office. Um, in order for you to come back in the office, you either need to be fully vaccinated um, or uh, sit in your office with the door closed with a mask on. So that wasn't happening for me uh, for either, either case because um, of my beliefs and um, and the science behind it. So uh, I left that job not knowing um, what was next, which was for the first time ever. I Normally I have something lined up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and here I was saying, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm walking away from that. Mm -hmm. So that was- That was scary. Scary. <laughs> I mean, we talked about it. I mean, yeah. It was a build up to coming to that point. It was a, like it was like a two. Well, we had talked about it months before they even came to you and said, "Hey, you guys have to come back into the office," mm -hmm. because we had we were talking about submitting something to them to have you continue working from home because we yes. just wanted you to be at home. Yeah. And there was no reason he couldn't do his job. He did perfectly fine. I mean, he helped the company land. A, $30 million dollar mm -hmm. contract right before he left. So there was no reason he couldn't do his job. Um, but yeah, it was probably, we had about a two week period, I think, where it was like, okay, we have to make a decision. And we sat down and luckily we had some money set aside and we just said, okay, well, we'll do it and we'll figure it out. And that's pretty much what we did. So when I left, I made uh, one phone call and it was to another firm and uh, that believed the same way in terms of vaccinations that, that I believe, or, or I should say medical freedom, not vaccinations, because 
Um, anyway, um, and during that process, other people, because I had taken, uh, I put a, a post on, I believe, Facebook at the time, and I put it on LinkedIn, which actually got huge traction. I wouldn't say it went viral, but I would say it went up close to a thousand views. Oh, oh, explaining about you quitting your job. Right. Yeah, you put it on LinkedIn. My mom shared it on LinkedIn. Um, CEOs were looking at it. Yeah. I mean, within you a can... couple of days, he had like 500 people had looked at it and liked it and shared it. And it was insane. And you can see who on, on LinkedIn is a little different. You can see which, you know, which CEO looked at it and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, it was funny when Faulkner's people looked at it. <laughs> That was the prior forum. I wasn't oh, going to say anything. Sorry, there. I wasn't going to say their name either. Um, I can edit it out. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, what we from there? From there, we got the job essentially um, from the one. Phone yeah, call there was a there was a couple phone calls that that came to me um, <clears> asking <throat> offering me a job. Yeah, um, which I was very surprised about like I, I just it was the first time ever like and they they were referenced both both times those people referenced that post on LinkedIn oh wow and and, the, and neither one was the company I had made the phone call for so <laughs> long story short I went to go work for the company that I originally called um and it just didn't work out because of the schedule and I wanted to be home more yeah and so I ended up leaving there um, there, there was no issues with medical freedoms there at all. They were great people, a great company. Um, it was just the hours ended up being more than, yeah. it, it was the hours and because of the hours, the stress. And then, I mean, he'd been home for a year and a half mm -hmm. and then he was gone like all of the time. <laughs> yeah. So that was a huge shock to us. So literally like I, her and I were, we were getting stressed out, both of us. It wasn't just me that was carrying the stress. And um, the, I think it was like that day I had, you had heard me give this big sigh as I walked out of the room or something like that. And I got the phone call from Jacob. Was, yeah, he, he always <laughs> comes in and he makes sure he kisses Caleb and I before he leaves. And as he left the room, I opened my eyes and looked at him and I saw his shoulders drop. And then I heard him just sigh this huge sigh and my heart just sank. So that day I had got a phone call out of the blue from someone uh, who called you prior from somebody who called me prior job. and it is now my current employer and he was just like hey man i'm just checking up on you and him and i had talked because i had known him for years in the industry and during the interview process originally he you know him and i talked more personally and and his upbringing was you know homeschool and and more montessori learning between him and his wife and there was a lot of some connections that were uh, more than just work. And uh, ultimately I went to go work for him. And now I'm home three days a week and mm -hmm. working from home. And two days I go into a, a beautiful office in Lexington. Mm -hmm. Even though it's almost a two hour drive, it's, he said it's just worth it. Because it's, in the it's beautiful to drive out there. Plus you go to work and he said he doesn't carry that, that weight. Right. So. Like when you look forward to work, it's a whole different story, right, Adam? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I told another friend, I don't know if I told you this, but um, he, how long had you been there? Like a week or it was your second week or something. And he'd actually called me and he was like, yeah, for the first time in my life in doing my job in 20 some years, I actually am enjoying this. And <laughs> I was like, okay, great. It is awesome. I love it. So that is a so much change in such a short period of time. And one thing that struck me as you're telling the story is um, I'm wondering if the first leap makes the second leap easier to give people an idea of like, the more you make hard choices, does it get any easier? What do you think? I think the more choices you have to make, well, as a single person, it it does and but then as a couple it makes it even that that communication and that having somebody have your back kind of thing makes it so it's not as hard no matter the choices you make but yes if you get to that place where you hit that wall and you have to make a difficult choice yeah 
each difficult choice opens you up to learn something from each one, which makes the next one like, okay, we got this. We really don't have to worry, even though we're stressed out. So one thing I would say is, is from, it is from a guy's perspective, um, being the breadwinner and the, you know, the bacon getter, whatever you want to call me. It at first is, was terrifying. It, it was absolutely terrifying. Uh, and it was uh, at was first, some, um, there was some sleepless two, nights. There, I want to say the first couple weeks, well, he ended up being without work for five weeks in between leaving the first employer to the second employer. Oh my gosh. And I don't think you would, you would have thought that like leaving the stress would leave, but it didn't. So <laughs> it just like stayed like here. <laughs> so that yeah, funny so the because, stress was, go ahead. Yeah. I remember this whole period of time and like, I forgot that it was five weeks, you know, like, cause you know, five weeks, once you're through it's, it, it's, like, it's so fast. Um, so you're talking about the first one, right? Yeah. Like leaping into not having a job is incredibly, um, cause we've been through it. You know, our family's been through it. Simple, not easy. Um, you also did try for um, a religious exemption, correct? Yeah. So the, yeah, the first firm. Equal yeah. Um, and I really I tried, don't think we should be afraid to say that. I don't care. That's... It's, it's whatever. Um, <laughs> I just didn't want to give them any press. <laughs> um, it's not good press. <laughs> yeah, I tried to do a religious exemption, um, even though I personally am, am you know, I, I didn't feel the need to do a religious exemption, but apparently it was required. Right. Yeah. Um, and then they, they pretty much came back and said, I'm sorry, your answer is not good enough. Yeah. We need more information. So we provided more information. And then they proceeded once again to come back and say, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so I even gave them like verses of to why it was not okay for me to wear a mask from the belief yeah from from the belief that I would carry and um, they essentially said sorry your constitutional rights not valid enough yeah personally I believe that it was because it wasn't a typical belief yeah. that they're like mm, you're just making this up but and you know it's a private company. They can do what they want. Ultimately, they could just fire me just to fire me if they wanted to. Well, that's um, the state of and it, and on top of that, I did not stick around to be fired. Mm -hmm. I left. Yeah. Well, yeah, because my mom and I were driving to South Dakota. I think we were actually in Iowa at the time. And Adam calls me and says, by the way, I just sent you an email. I want you to read it. And so I read over it and I'm reading it to my mom as because at this point, of course, my mom knows everything that's going on and we've all talked about it. And she, uh, her and I were both like, what? Because they essentially came back and said, well, we need more information. That's all we're asking from you. Um, and this was after you saying, look, I have no more to say. Mm -hmm. And then his rebuttal, which was what I was reading, was this is as of this date, this is my last day with this employer and best so of so. luck, yeah, peace. Pretty much. And they ended up emailing back not even an hour, maybe 30 minutes later. Oh no, but we just need more information. And I'm just like, no, you don't get it. We're done. <laughs> you drew the line line in the sand and I was done at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Was there another thought you had, Adam, before it's, it might be gone by now because we, we moved uh, on? The, the, going back to, the, to the, the weight, I guess, of everything and the decision making, that first time, like I said, was terrifying. But it got mm -hmm. easier. The more I thought about it, the more the, the nights all of a sudden went, you know, there was no more sleepless nights. And there was, in uh, that second time that I had to make a decision, it was, Hey, Lisa, I really think this is the right decision. And within 24 hours, yeah. it was yeah. just like, I mean. Well, it, because the guy called him Monday morning and said, hey, how are you doing? Adam's like, well, by and, the way. And by, by Friday. By that evening. Yeah. We, he had an interview on the phone 
which somehow I ended up being part of. And then he went in the next day, let people know at work what he was going to do after he called the gentleman back and said, I accept. Yeah. And by Thursday, so that was Tuesday, by Wednesday, essentially, they just pushed him out, even though it was not animosity. There was no yeah. animosity or anything yes. like that. They just shut him out of the system. Yes. So he couldn't yeah. do any more work. So yeah. by Wednesday, he was done. Wow. And Thursday, he drove to Lexington. And <laughs> Monday meeting. Monday was my official start date. So. And then all weekend long, we drove, to, well, we drove to North Carolina for my brother's wedding. He worked pretty much every time he could during the weekend. And then we drove back and he started Monday. So <laughs> that was in a stretch of a week then from the yeah. fall to start. And yeah, I mean, to me, what, what I really love about this story and that I admire so much is that... Um, it was the difficulty of sticking to your beliefs and your convictions and, and the fear that comes with that and just how amazing things have worked out, you know, and it's just, it's a lot of these decisions. It's like that. It's like a leap of faith. You have to trust that somehow you are going to find your way forward. And that's what I love about you guys. You do that over and over again. Um, so is there anything else before I move on that you wanted to add about that whole, um, not about that in particular, but Adam and I, at this point, we've been together for 12 years and we just not, we're just not afraid of not having an income because we know no matter what we do, we'll find any job. It doesn't matter what the job is. If it has to have, you know, if you have to work cleaning toilets, then you clean toilets to make the money to take care of your family. Right. Because this is not, this is, this scenario here is not our first issue with jobs yeah you know when we got together adam had just gotten laid off it was in 2008 so during the recession like six months where you didn't work i think right yeah. wasn't it about six months and then there was a time period where i didn't work well hey. and but then i continued not to work because i stayed home she, she so. still went out with me and i didn't have a job so i mean hey <laughs> promising start you yeah, but... with me and then that was it <laughs> I totally, I can totally identify with what you're saying though, because it's the kind of the same thing because Mike had lost his job before, which was a difficult experience and not fun. I really felt it prepared us for this to be yeah. mentally strong and to know that we will find our way forward. And because I do feel that there are so many people that just lack the conviction that like this, I'm not doing this. This is not okay with me. You know, well, people and, don't like being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. Too. And that's, those are those things like you have to get, as I've heard some very influential people say recently, you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable yes. in the decision you make because the uncomfortableness is what helps drive you forward. Yeah. It is also like where the magic is when you yeah. make yourself uncomfortable, that's when you grow. And then that's when mm -hmm. like really good things start happening. You know, it's not always easy. Not no. simple, not easy, right? We're, right. We're, you know, <laughs> Um, okay. So I would like to like uh, transition a little bit um, and just okay. talk about because you guys are my original founding members of the Rise Up community. And so I kind of want to relate this back to what we are creating together. Um, and something in the front of my mind when I talk to you guys, because actually this is something I said to Lisa right from the start. I'm like, I don't know that you need my community, Lisa, because you're so like, I, I, I'm calling them my advanced. They're very advanced um, unpluggers. They've already unplugged in so many ways. They've, you know, Lisa is an experienced um, unschooler. Their son is 10 now. Is he 10? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he'll be 11 in March. Okay, so he's 10 years old. She's been unschooling him all these so years. In fifth grade. Right, what grade <laughs> is that? Um, they're building a tiny home, which I have loved watching the progress of that. Um, and now we've heard Adam's whole story and Lisa's, their story together of navigating these times. And so, but Lisa was adamant, no, I am going to be your first member. And then Adam became such a, a, a wonderful addition too. And so I have ideas about like what they're getting from this experience, but I would like to hear from you guys, um, what have been some of your favorite parts being part of the Rise Up community and what you kind of feel um, you're getting out of it and what you see in the future maybe i know that was a lot so what did, <laughs> let's start with um like your favorites or what you think you're getting out of it 
All right, I'll go first. Okay. All right, so my favorites. Um, be, and, and not because I, I guess it is because I'm so unplugged. Um, I'm not always the most active on Facebook. Mm -hmm. However, I try like hell to meet, to, to get on every single one of these little streams and get togethers where we can. Um, so much so I cut out of work early if I need to, you know. <laughs> yeah, he may not comment on everything that's going on, but he hears me talk about it the whole time anyway. So <laughs> Yep, and she's she's a good bridge for me because she's like, hey, you go watch this video or hey, go you yeah, know, listen to this. Yeah, I picked the important this. thing for him. And, um, and so for me, it is the community and the camaraderie and that kind of the socialness aspect that I'm getting from this. And as we grow, I'm seeing more and more faces coming which is awesome. And um, yeah, that's ultimately for me, what it is, is that community and that growth and watching it, watching it grow. What do you see in the future? What do I see in the future? Like in the future for it, because that was one of her. Oh, well. Like what will we get? We are building a tiny house and we're going to have, buy some <laughs> land. We're going to need people on that land. So yes. yo, what's up? I love it. And I don't want just anybody living there. I need to have some cool vetted people. I love that. I love it. That's a good way to put it. There you go. I would say my favorite part um, has been the, the Zoom calls and um, just connecting. Um, the community, like we're building a community. So that to me is like um, just like a result of the connection. Yeah. So to me, it's, it's the connection is so important. And um, also from this connection. Now, granted, I had met this particular person prior to this group. I actually was able to reconnect with somebody I had briefly met, and we have become friends outside of the calls and the comments and all that. And she lives in our area, so it's nice. That's all your fault. <laughs> That's all, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I had my suspicions that that would be your answer. And um, that is kind of the takeaway I want people to take is that I think no matter where we are on that path, and we have that um, rise up uh, adventure, right, our um, transformation adventure, where we're talking about like, where we start when we're almost frozen in fear, and we feel so alone, right? Because lots of times when we start examining these beliefs, and we're like, wait a second, this doesn't seem right. But no one else seems to be questioning it, right? Like when we think everyone, everyone thinks a certain way. Um, and then working through this path to a place where we feel supported, we feel connected to a community that understands us. Um, and we don't feel ashamed or alone about our beliefs anymore. Um, I think having people that are farther in advance is actually a huge benefit to everyone coming in. And Actually, I, I think of this as like unschooling, right, um, Lisa, and homeschooling because- Well, the older kids teach mm -hmm. the younger kids. Teach right, the younger exactly. Kids. Like people talk about this with homeschooling all the time, that we don't segregate our children based on age, just like they, like they do in school. And right. if you see kids like out in the wild, in nature, um, that's how they- they're, they're emulating the older. Mm -hmm. And the, old, the Whether older- Whether it's older children, or adults, or whoever. Yes. The older kids will mentor the younger kids. They will teach them, right? And the younger kids look up to them. And there's so many beautiful relationships. And it's that way. It doesn't stop when we're children, right? Like, our, so everyone in our community is contributing. And we're all supporting each other. And that's what I love about it. Um, and I really just see, um, like you guys said, I just, I'm really excited to see it grow and see more people come in with different experiences. And we can continue to support people. So... Thank you guys so much for chatting tonight. Is there anything else you want to say before we say goodbye? Yes, um, I was going to say uh, probably the biggest reason other than connection for ourselves for doing this is finding like-minded people that eventually will come together as a community to help our children have a better connection and a better community so that we can grow and help them grow in what good beliefs and systems that we want for them. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, thinking about that, right? Like to think of what we can build for our children in the future so that they can have better, a better foundation and a better community than we have right now is like, it's like 
golden, right? Thinking about that future. I love that. Thank you, Lisa. Absolutely. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to say I 100% agree with my wife because because <laughs> he has to <laughs> <laughs> because it's just good practice <laughs> and you also because do. we both care about the same. I thing. mean, yeah. Ultimately, the you know why I get up to go to work every day is is to is to provide you know that life that that is better than what I had growing up yeah. and. Um, and and to to come home every day or or I guess not every day but now to be able to see it every day, um and and the questions that that my son comes up to me and asks and you know it's just it's worth its weight in gold to to have that and it ultimately ties back to our fundamental beliefs in our community. Yeah, love it. So. All right. Well, thank you, Adam and Lisa, and everyone watching. Um, please reach out if you have any questions about our Rise Up community because we are looking to grow. The doors are open this week um, for a few more days. Um, they will be closing Friday evening at 11. I'll put the link in the comments for you to check out more information and join and just spread the word because we're looking to grow and just spread all the good vibes far and wide. So remember, be bold, be brave, be you because who else is there to be? We'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.